Anchors up, sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. Doing all right. I know. I know this is. I know. Yeah. I know this is a, a Scarlet and Grade episode here, but it's hate week. It is finally here. It is the best week out of the year. It is hate week. It's hate week. We're gonna do our best. <laughs> We're gonna do our yeah. best to stay on topic <laughs> and talk about Ohio State versus M- Minnesota. Um, <laughs> because that's what we're here to talk about today. Uh, thumbnail would be great for a football as art account. First off, thank you. Second, uh, credit to Tom Orr for being the uh, taker of that photograph. Um, all, all, by the way, I probably should have said this at some point during the season. Every, I think every, at least since October, if not the entire season, every single scarlet and grade thumbnail uh has been from a tom moore picture so nice that's just just to give credit where credit's due on that um our our friends over at buckeye huddle uh yeah so kyle we're talking about ohio state and we're talking about minnesota we're talking about minnesota we're talking about minnesota we're talking about minnesota um we're not talking about michigan it's hate week, but we're not talking about we're not talking about that team. We're talking about the game that was. We're not talking about the game that is coming. So let's do that. Um, Ohio State defeats Minnesota 37 to three. Unspectacular in the first half. Could have been better. Um, need to Cal McCord specifically needs to be better in the red zone. Uh, play calling in the red zone could have been better. Um, I think day, if I'm, if I'm going to criticize day, uh, along with Kyle McCord, I think day was trying to maybe like force the ball into some older guys, even into the first half is like, he's like, Hey, let's, let's get Julian Fleming a touchdown. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like they were trying to force the ball a bit doing stuff like that. Um, but at, regardless of that, uh, just was not great uh, in the red zone yesterday, which, you know, can't can't do that against Michigan. No, but I mean, I mean, the positive thing is that went into the red zone five times, got points, yeah. got points out of there five times. Yeah, but three only three touchdowns out of that five. So you, you come up with 20. What is that? Uh yeah, 27 out of the possible 35 points in the red zone there, which is, you know, against Michigan, that's if if you do that against Michigan, you go five for five, getting 27 points. That's good. I'll take that, honestly. Right, I, I think. But but against Minnesota here, <laughs> it it should have been, yeah. The play, I think the play calling should be a little bit better. I think McCord should have been a little bit better there, but is what it is, though. Uh, Gangland says ran a very base offense from what I remember. Uh, I, I don't know. Kind like, of. Eventually, yes. I feel like they came out doing not total base stuff early in the game. Um, and, and they totally showed their cards as far as EE being healthy. We haven't seen a Mecca Buka look like that in weeks. It yeah, was nice was seeing really a Mecca nice. Buka like that. He, he, he got targeted. He got targeted the most in this game, eight times, five catches for 83 yards in this game. Yeah. Great seeing a Mecca back in here. I don't want to say he's hundred percent, but he's, he's near, near hundred percent from what we saw ah. in Minnesota. I don't know how many dudes are a hundred percent in November. That is true. Yes. Um, Cal McCord certainly isn't. Uh, he, he took a nasty shot going into the half in what was yes. an incredibly mismanaged final drive of the first half. Like yes. we're, we're not, we haven't brought up the chalkboard yet. Um, so I'm not going to get super into this, but 
like the end of that first half alone gonna lose the coaches uh, some some grades in the uh, like what 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 are you what are you doing and end of that first half they're kind of playing offense but they're kind of not playing offense um and then you you go and you run like a, a legitimate like what looks to be like a legitimate pass play but it's it for the very fast for the very last play of the half and why because you're you're nowhere near the end zone you're not going to get it there and tackle gets like totally beat and for the sake of reps i don't know i mean maybe but it, it's it's late you're leaving your season. dudes out there it's late in the season like you shouldn't be going out yeah. there for reps anymore like either run the two minute drill or don't yeah and, and i kind of get it like and i know someone's thinking well you you, you kind of run the offense and then and then if you get the first down then you go but by the time they got the first down there was only i, I don't know like 40 seconds on the clock like it took them the majority of it because they weren't hurrying at all like, I don't know, they they didn't know if they were trying to run the clock out or if they were trying to score at the end of the first half. And they ended up, I mean, ended up doing, they ended up running the clock out. But, at, you know, at what cost? You know, your quarterback takes a nasty hit. You still don't have your number two quarterback. Don't, don't screw the season. Yeah. On, on yeah, a nothing yeah. play. Yeah. All right, so, I mean, overall, how are the takeaway from this game, Jared? Defense just smothered, just absolutely smothered Minnesota. 100, 159 total yards against um, for Minnesota here. 89 in the air, 70 in the ground there. Yeah, that just great, great defense here. And they, they got a pair of uh, turnovers, and that's the start of the second half there. Yeah, very, very impressed with with the defense here. Even though, even though they couldn't get the shutout here, that's twice in two weeks here, back to back weeks where there's a field goal that happens in the game there to prevent the the shutout that the defense has been hoping to get this year. It, it's been a while since Ohio State's got a had a uh, had a shutout though. Yeah, the. Uh maryland game from 2021 is that right not maryland yeah maryland it was maryland right um possibly yeah it was i'm pretty sure it was yeah, is that was our last definitely? big 10 shutout um i, I think um, that's our last shutout period not in I 2021 think. not in 2020 no nothing nothing and nothing good happened in 2020. Was it 2019? <laughs> 2019 against Cincinnati. Okay, I guess it wasn't even Maryland. What do I know? The last Big Ten game? Oh, boy. I'm going to guess it's Rutgers. My guess is <laughs> Rutgers. Did they ever yep. fire that cannon? Yep. Yep. T 2017 is the last time Ohio State shut out a Big Ten team. We should play Iowa and it was, more often. It, and it was hey. Rutgers 50, 56 to nothing. Hey man, play hopefully play Iowa in two weeks. And there's so many times so many times they got so close to to that shutout, too. I mean, I'm I mean, how many times this year? Purdue, Michigan State, Minnesota, all with one scores. Uh in Indiana. Indiana at the start of the year. That's that's four, that's four games. Or teams have scored seven points or less. They're close. Yeah. They're very, very close. Very and close. Minnesota, and the Minnesota points, like, firmly in sad field goal territory. Yeah. Very firmly in, in sad field goal territory. Yeah, well, Gangland let's, let's... says, yeah, they, yeah, actually, but they might score on a pick six. Are you talking about Iowa? Should we play Iowa in two weeks? Um, yeah, but overall, great day for the defense. Jack Sawyer had a huge day. I think he had yeah, as many 
as many tackles for losses in the first quarter, first half, uh, as he had all season. Um, I can tell you. Yeah, Jack Sawyer had a hell of a day, had a hell of a day for sure. Uh, one sack, three and a half tackles for losses and six. To- uh, yeah, six total tackles on the day. Is Minnesota's yeah, offensive he- line good like Minnesota good? Um, uh, I mean, they ran somewhat well this season. Um, that's not two and a half in the first quarter. Two and a half in the first quarter. They ran the they've run the ball well this season. Uh, it, it's worth- if you remember. Remember, he got that uh, strip sack, the first play of Minnesota in the second in the second half. That's right. Um, I, I mean, it is worth noting that. Like. Minnesota didn't have of their three top running backs, they didn't have two of them, um, especially since Zach, uh, you know, if you count Zach Evans being out, which he only got the ball twice out and, and then he got hurt. Yeah. Um, so I mean, Minnesota that, has run the ball really well this season, but they were, uh, far from a hundred percent in the, in the backfield. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, and my thoughts were more in pass pro. I thought their run D looked, uh, great pass protection. Uh, honestly, they don't pass the ball all that often, so I'm not sure they had one of the lowest, uh, pass play selection percentages in the country heading into this game. Um, yeah, so I'd, you, ha- I'd have remember, to look. Yeah. If you remember in our, in our preview, like he's, he does not throw the ball all that well here. Looking here for the year, for the year, he's only completing 52 and a half percent. So he was a little more just a tad bit above average in this What's game. What's the here. quarterback sack percentage if you have those show notes up? Do you have those show I notes w- up? I do not. I will pull it up. You can you can keep going talking about either talking about who 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 else had a great game. I, I thought Steel Chambers had a had a good game as well too on the defensive side. Uh yeah, it's I thought the front seven overall had a really good game. Like on the Monday episode, I talked a lot about how Ohio State's been getting pushed a lot as far as the, you know, run straight at them run game goes and how that concerns me heading into Michigan. Um, and, and I thought that especially without Mike Hall, I thought Ohio State's defense looked really like not just good against the run, but stout against the run. Like they, yeah. they weren't getting... Every once in a while, Minnesota was opening up a hole. But what really concerns me, especially, like I said, heading into the Michigan game is like, what happens if they just line up, pinch and just go? Um, yeah, Hamilton Tyler, had a really good game in relief of my call. Absolutely, yeah. Zach. And Tyler, and Tyler doing Tyler things, too. Like he, he had himself a good game as well. Uh, let's see. Quarterback sack percentage, 71st in the country. So bottom half as far as pass pro goes. Yeah. Yeah. Defense played really well. Almost a couple of uh, uh, touchdowns for the for the defense there. Uh, JT yeah. had that um, fumble recovery that he was just five yards short. And then um, should have given it to Hancock. <laughs> Hancock was right yeah. there. He's like, give me the ball. Should have given yep, it. And then, yeah, and then, and then Hancock got close to. And uh, can, can we can we spend a minute about that uh, about that celebration from the uh, defense there? Well, wor- well yeah. worth the penalty. Well, well worth, worth the penalty. And by the way, because I know a lot of people were complaining, it was a personal foul. If you get two personal fouls in the game, you're disqualified from the game. That's why the ref had to announce all of the players involved that he had to, he had to put it out there that these are the players for, who have a personal foul for, call for a moment there. When, when the referee was um, naming or yeah, naming off all the, all the players, I thought it was 15 yards for a moment. I thought it was 15 yards for each one. <laughs> <laughs> nah, 
you just you just got you he had to say it he had to say it because yeah yeah i already said it yeah yeah all right off off they said hancock here. twice i missed that one gangland uh offensively um i thought mccord in certain certain parts of the game i thought he looked pretty good but then there's other parts it's like especially in the red zone there where he just yeah yeah that 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 definitely concerns me going into uh this weekend's game here but man when travion is healthy you just you give that dude the ball he he, he averaged almost 10 yards a pop in this game yeah yeah that that uh 75 yard to start the second half will help that out but but still you're you're averaging almost 10 yards a carry there and he got a pair of catches as well too just i know every i know everybody loves and we'll talk about mark um, marvin harrison jr as the stud of this offense this offense uh lives and dies by um when Trevion is healthy or not, like when he's not he- when he's not healthy, I would say struggles around the ball, and they become so one dimensional. And with him on there, well, yeah, it's and getting getting much, a much Mecca, better team, getting a Mecca going again, as far as his health is concerned, is is also huge, because, like Minnesota essentially said, hey, we're gonna double. We're going to double Harrison all game. And Ohio State said, cool. And they just gave it to a Mecca and Trey instead. And Stover. And, and I think, and Stover. And, and I think that, like, that's what Ohio State was missing when the offense was stagnant during the middle of the season. Um, hell, even during the beginning of the season. It was just like, oh, you want to drop your safety way deep over top of Marvin Harrison and just, you know, play him short and long and not let him get open. Cool. We have other weapons. We'll get it to Stover. We'll get it to a Mecca. We'll get it to Trey. And, you know, even if Marvin Harrison Jr. doesn't statistically have a good game this game, he's essentially out there blocking two players every play. That's I mean, that's essentially what he's doing. If your offensive lineman was blocking two players every single play, you'd call him a god. Mm -hmm. Well, if they want to. If they want to dedicate two people to Marv every single play. That's what you're getting. Especially if they want to sit in two deep safeties. Hell yeah. I mean, yeah. Or even one deep safety that's only playing one side of the field, which is, you know, what they were doing. Yeah. And Ohio State has so much talent to be able to, to beat that kind of defense too. like Emeka, perfect receiver for that Stover, the, the safety blanket there and Trevion for the, for the wheel route. Uh, I think we've seen the wheel route uh, quite a few times this year and worked uh, very well. I'd be so tempted if I was Ryan Day, just and to let's essentially not forget about X or Fleming, um, yeah, who Fleming. I know doesn't, yeah. who I know doesn't get a ton of looks and a ton of opportunities, but he's still a top flight wide receiver, um, and a guy who I hope comes back next year. And I feel like that might be a controversial take, and it shouldn't be. I really, really hope Julian Fleming's on the team next year. Um, if I'm Ryan Day, I am so tempted to have essentially I envision it almost like you know how sometimes, especially if you watched like LeBron in his prime or Kobe in his prime or Jordan in his prime, sometimes you'd see the offense where like everyone would just go off to the side, leaving the court wide open in the middle and just you know, beat your guy one-on-one, give your best player and their best player a chance to play one-on-one right down the middle of the court. I'd be so tempted to stick Marvin Harrison Jr. on one side of the field and then put 
you know, Stover, Fleming, and EE e. on the other side of the field. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of a lot of different things you can do here. Just, just and, to and, see and what and they it's, do, and it's good. And it's good seeing, and it's good seeing all of these. Well, most most of the players um, getting healthy right at the right time now. Yeah, yeah. That that that's that's a huge and important key, especially after last year where Ohio State just got decimated by the injury bug and and shout out to Minnesota. They had a terrible day as far as injuries was concerned. Um, it was a terrible day across college football as far as injuries concerned, but um, yeah, the, the Minnesota had a tough day as far as injuries. Um, but yeah, Ohio, after last year, you know, you have Trey healthy, you have Emeka healthy, you have uh, you have Dallin Hayden, who is fresh out of the garage and, and ready to go. You know, you obviously, you know, you don't have you don't have chop and that sucks, but Chip is there and he's healthy and. Ohio State's. Is I mean, you know, I imagine, you know, you're missing like two of your best players down the middle of the field on defense in this game. Um, and that that's not even counting ransom. Ransom's uh done for the season. But even then you have um you have Ike and you have uh Hall missing this game. I really don't know what to expect out of Hall one way or the other, but I would be shocked if if Eichenberg doesn't play. So I, I don't know. Like I, I feel and especially after watching Maryland and Michigan play, I feel a lot better about Ohio State and Michigan today than I did on Friday. Because I was somewhat pessimistic about it on Friday, Ooh. and uh, and I'll tell you this much: the Vegas line shifted two points before Saturday. Ohio State was a five and a half point dog to to Michigan. After Ohio State's a three and a half point dog to Michigan, that's where it opened. I don't know if it's moved since, but it'll move more by game day. Gangland, I agree. Uh, I, I think it'll move closer to Ohio State by game day. Uh, I'm sorry. The, I, think, the, 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 I think it's going to go down the, the, to one and a half points. I think it would be one and a half points. I think I think that's plausible. I, I do. Um, I'm sorry, but it the, the two of the worst games that Michigan has had against Big Ten opponents have been in the last two weeks. And don't hmm. tell me that's a coincidence. Hmm. Don't tell me it's a fucking coincidence because it's not. Hmm. Oh, but, but but Jared, but Jared, 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 they got to be really tough opponents, though. OK, Penn State. Yes, sure. But Maryland, but Maryland, Maryland, Maryland. Yeah. What, Kyle, who 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 did Michigan give up the most points to this season out of curiosity? Who scored the most points? By the way, heading into the Penn State game, the Michigan defense had played zero snaps inside their own 10 yard line, which is a really impressive stat Very. until that stat got blown to shit in the past two weeks. All of a sudden, they're playing a lot of plays inside their own 10 yard line. Huh. How did that happen? I don't know. The, the, the Maryland Michigan game gave me a lot of hope. Um, it, it was Michigan's human Michigan bleeds. Uh, and it's, I, I'm sorry. It's not a coincidence that they, Oh, look at that, Kyle, the most points given up by Michigan all season were the last two games. Huh? Wait a minute. Let's look a little bit closer here for a second. 
the last three games is when they've given up the most points. Going back to Purdue. Huh. Very interesting. Very interesting. How about that? Well, how about, it's how almost about we do like some... they were cheating. Yeah. I don't want to say we that do... they were cheating. Yeah. How about we do some gradings now, Jared? Yeah, you got anything yeah we, to the we totally slipped into Michigan talk there for a second, didn't we? All right, yeah, let's let's do some grades. Uh, let's swap over to that scene. Here we are. All right, Kyle, let's let's grade the Ohio State team. Let's start with the coaching. Yeah, I'm I'm going to give a B. I'll give a B. The defense is an A plus. Uh, defense is an A plus, but the the offense there, especially in the the end of this first half there and in the red zone, very questionable. Like got to do got to do better there. So I'm kind of average that out to. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll agree with you, Jared. I'll, I'll do a B plus actually. I'll do a B plus. Kyle, I was waiting to hear your reasoning to see if you could uh, bring me down to a B, but <laughs> apparently. Apparently not. Uh, Gangland in the chat says they had two head coaches suspended for the same cause in the same season. Do you know how insane that is? Neither got fired either. Two head. I'm not, I'm, I'm not following that sentence. They had two head coaches suspended for the same cause in the same season. Are you counting the interim head coaches? Harbaugh and Moore suspended this year. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, neither have been fired yet. Neither have been fired yet. All right, quarterback here. Um, I thought McCord was fine. I thought he was fine. Uh, outside of the red zone, he was really good. So I'll give, I'll give him a... I'll give him a B. I'll, I'll just uh, a straight B. I'll make a B minus. Uh, you you got to be better in the red zone. Uh, yeah, straight up. You got to be better in the red zone. We're not we're not. I don't think we're going to beat Michigan with field goals. Straight up. But to be f well, God, there's so much I want to say, but we're going to save that for for the know your enemy. All right, we're just going to move on. Uh, running back. <laughs> Running back A plus. He missed Fleming. I wanted that one for him. Yeah. Like I. Yeah. I, I think the the Fleming miss alone moves him from a from a B down to a B minus for me. They was ticked off for that. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Running back. Uh, running back, running back A plus. Yeah. We we already talked a lot about Trey and how how great he is so just a plus i agree uh and this was not a bad minnesota run defense uh, i'm not saying it was by 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 no means is it like the best run defense or is it even like a great run defense but it's a pretty good run defense so yeah uh, i think an a plus is warranted here Offensive line, Kyle. Uh, how many how many sacks did they give up? I'm scrolling. One up, just sack, I believe. Quick. One sack, and that was that was the questionable play calling for from the coaches at the end of the first half. There. Other than that, like I thought, I thought the offensive line probably had one of their best games of the season. So I would say like a I'll say like an A minus. I thought I thought they had a pretty good game here. How it goes with an A minus. Um I I'm not gonna go I'm not gonna I'm not gonna broach into the A territory because I thought that they could have been better from a pass defense perspective. Uh Minnesota's not some sort of also also Matt Jones hurt. Yeah, we'll we'll see. We'll see, Gangland. Um I, I'm going to I'm going to keep them down in the B's. I'm going to go with a B plus uh, the pass protection against a team 
that's not necessarily a good pass rush team, I, I think could have been better, but they are getting much better from a run block perspective. So you also have to respect that. Tight end. Tight end. We had like three different tight ends with a catch in this game. Yeah, they they, they got Gerd one at the end of the game for sure. Uh, Joe Royer also had one. That's right. He did have one. Yeah. Oh. Well, I would say like a, I think I'll give the same grade like I did with the uh, the offensive line. I'll say an A minus, A minus for the for the tight ends here. Always great, see great to see Stover back in getting some reps here. Got got a touchdown in his last game at Ohio Stadium here. So always a good feeling. Is that confirmed? Does he have a COVID year? Sure, he's gone, Jared. I'm just saying, like, let's not. Let's not say things that we don't know to be true. OK, well, All right. listen, will they stay or will they go it is a is a December podcast and we'll do it. But for right now. They're coming back unless they're not. For right now. Guitar. Right? <laughs> uh, wide receivers. This is tough because I thought so. Amika, I thought I had a good game. Uh, honestly, that honestly that was probably about it. <laughs> I thought I thought Emeka had a good game. Uh, Marvin did what he could. That 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 one catch was a catch, by the way. Like that that he 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 had he had he had a, a I think it was his left toe down. He that was a catch. But either way, either way, I don't. I think it was a catch, but I also wouldn't have overturned it. I don't think there was evidence, but I, I do think it was a catch. I listen. Sometimes, this, this, this sometimes, is, this cam is, listen. Cameras were invented by men. Marvin is 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 not human. We we can't expect human created devices to capture the inhuman things that Marvin Harrison is capable of. Sometimes you have to forgive the technology, Kyle. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll give the I'll give the wide receivers like a a B minus. Like it's maybe maybe I'm being too harsh here. I mean, yeah, Marvin had three catches, had a touchdown in this game, was very limited just based on the defense that Minnesota had against him. Emeka looked good as well, but who? But that, that that was really it. I know I know Fleming had a pair of catches, I think early on, and I don't know, I, I just expect a little bit more knowing how good this these wide receivers are. Totally fair. Uh we grade based off of expectation. Our expectations for the wide receivers are sky high. Defensive line, Kyle. Oh boy, I'm I'm peeking ahead to the notes to see what Kyle's doing on the defensive side. He's gonna go a plus. Uh, he's gonna go a, a bit plus crazy here. A plus on the defensive line. I mean, they what, what did they average here? Two point four yards on the ground for Minnesota. A plus. Yeah, uh, I mean Jack Sawyer alone. Uh, again, grade based off of expectation, right? No, my call in this game. And they still had an excellent, excellent football game. Again, it's very helpful that. You know, of Minnesota's three best running backs, one of them doesn't play. The second one barely played. And then they were left over with with one guy. I'm going to go with the A plus. I really I really, I really need this team to be. I, need, I think they need to get better with the pass rush, um, but the, just that wasn't it wasn't a huge factor in this particular game. Linebackers, Kyle. A plus. A plus. I, I thought the linebackers played uh, very well. Uh, Steel Chambers had himself a good game. Uh, Gabe Powers um, saw quite a bit of quite a bit of uh, play time in here too. And I thought he looked really well as well. And, and CJ Hicks later on in yeah. the second half. 
Cody Simon comes in for Eichenberg for this game here, and I thought he filled in pretty well. I think we're going to see a lot of Cody Simon next week, or yeah, next weekend, along with Eichenberg. I, I think I thought it's... That, I thought the linebackers yeah. looked really well. A plus. I, I, th I, think, I think next week is going to be a very Cody Simon heavy game. I think he's a little bit better... With with the big Michigan offensive line, uh, I think his particular body type and skill set uh, is probably going to be favored over Steel Chambers in this game. Um, he's better against the run. Yeah, Gangland, that's that's essentially what I'm taking the very long way of saying. Sack for hey, Jonathan uh, Cooper. Good for him. Corners. I I thought I thought the corners played very very well again. You only let up 89 yards in the air. Yeah. A plus, A plus, and give the A plus to the safeties as well. The whole defensive, the whole defensive side gets yeah. an A plus. Yeah, that, that, that is Kyle. Kyle is in the Christmas spirit. He is getting very generous over here. Um, I'm not going to be quite that generous. Um, I think I'm just going to go with a just an A no no pluses or anything for the corners uh mostly because Kyle McManus man he he couldn't hit the broad side of a park semi most plays uh it's just hard for me to get too generous in in that so i'm going to i'm going to go with just an a for uh the corners and the safeties Um, we had another DB interception there. Yeah. Um, Hancock is really, really hitting his stride the past few weeks. Like he's been incredible the past few weeks. He's been very, very great. Uh, special teams. You, you, I'm curious to hear your rating on and your reasoning behind this, Jared. I'm going with the C. Uh, they need to get better at fielding punts. Uh, a lot of the, the, the one of the reasons why Ohio State was in such bad shape going into halftime was because they were getting trestle balled to death, just getting pinned deep into their own territory. Um, Ohio State's been... Ohio State loses the, the special teams battles most games. I feel like they lost the special. They won in every single phase of this game except for special teams. That's my reasoning. I think they got their ass kicked on special teams. I was looking here. So, I mean, per punt, per punt, uh, Murko did really well. He, he almost had 50 yards of 50 yards a kick here. Cool. How many I, times did he pin Minnesota in the five yard line? Um, I don't think just, he did, but he did I'm have one saying, of them. He did have one of them inside the 20. Ohio state coaching won the day. Ohio state quarterbacking wins the day. Running backs wins the day. Offensive line, tight end, wide receiver, defensive line, linebacker, cornerback, safety. Ohio State won every single phase of the game. Except special teams. Yeah, and I, and I just have a feeling that that's just what. It's just the special teams that they're just trying to run is see if they can get a block and. And then just fair catch it. Like they I weren't I, even I, fair catching it. <laughs> well, no, no, and. Every single one here, oh, oh yeah, they they kind of just let the ball bounce, but I don't I don't know. We're we're, we're not going to see any change. We're not going to see any change here. I'll just I'll give the kicking oh. team a B. I'll give I'll give the kicking team a B here because I mean, Mur Murko did really well. Fielding did really well as well. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mark down the entire special teams uh, just because we're not fielding punts or kicks here. I, I thought I thought both I thought both our punter and, and kick and kicker did really well in this game. So 
Field, fielding had a good day. I mean, I gave him a C. I didn't give him a D. I didn't give him an F. Um, but Worker field- did well too. I mean, for for what for what he was limited doing, I thought he did well. Like I said, he averaged um, almost fifty yards a punt here. He had two punts for almost a hundred yards. So, by the way, on one of those punts, Ohio State. <laughs> excuse me. the The long snapper was lined up on the end of the line. On the end of the line, uh, the lined up in the tackle position. I, I don't, I don't have any commentary past that. I just, I don't feel like I've seen or read or listened to anyone talk about that. I, I don't, again, I don't, I don't have any analysis beyond the observation. It's Murka run left deterrent. <laughs> is 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 the long snapper tasked with not letting Murka run? Is that what you're saying, Gangland? That's funny. All right, let's let's go ahead and give out our Buckeye leaves next to your Jared. Um, yeah, I I said B. Okay. All right, uh, Buckeye leaves offensively. I'm gonna give I'm gonna give mine to Trey. I mean, almost. If you count receptions as well, he averaged over 10 yards per touch in this game. Yeah. Outstanding. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Mecca. Uh, just happy, super happy to see him be him again. Um, I That's that's it. That's the entire reasoning. I'm incredibly happy to see a Mecca at... I don't know. In the past couple games where he's been quote-unquote back, he's looked like... 70 75 percent himself this game i'm not saying he is a hundred percent but this game he looked a hundred percent he looked like a hundred percent of himself uh and for that reason and that reason not alone he is also the leading wide receiver on the team i i'll I'll give him my buck i leave for the offense Mm -hmm. all right all right defensively who do you got jared uh, defensively, uh, I'm going to go Jack Sawyer, uh, huge, huge day for him. Three and a half tackles for a loss, a sack leads the team in tackles, uh, huge day for him. All right. Yep. And I'm, I'm going to go with Hancock. Um, he, he had that, he had that interception in the, in the second half there to really just really boost Ohio state and yeah. Only, only, only had two tackles in the game, which tells me he did very well. Right. <laughs> and so, yeah, I'll give mine to Hancock. Uh, Gangland says Calvin Simpson Hunt. Uh, yeah, uh, another young dude getting reps late in the game. Same um, thing with Ryan Turner. Ryan Turner got in there as well. Yeah, uh, young guy getting reps in the game, looking excellent. He played great because they attacked his side. I mean, I don't know. I think you're giving the Minnesota offense a lot of credit for thinking they were doing anything other than trying to survive. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know if there was a game plan at that point. Um, Wild card. I'm going to give mine to Hamilton. Um, Comes in, plays, starts in in replacement for Hall, um, the injured Hall. So, uh, and didn't miss a beat. Uh, he may not have the explosiveness that Hall has, but if you need a dude who's going to jam up the middle and take up blockers and not give ground, which honestly is exactly what Ohio State needs, I'm super happy to have Hamilton out there doing his thing. Yeah, I'm going to go, I'll go with the defensive line as well. I'll go with uh, Ty Leak as well. Uh, had himself a great game in here. Uh, really plugged plugged up the hole there. Uh, I'll give my, I'll give my wild card to Ty Leak. Absolutely. Um, Kyle, do we have any uh, anything in the Ask Sloopcast mailbag, or do you want to wrap this one up? Um, I got nothing. I got nothing in the in the mailbag here. So I think we can go ahead and uh, end the episode here. All right, uh, everyone. It is Hate Week. 
if you're looking for a fun place to hang out with Buckeye fans, um, it's a little bit more casual, a little bit more laid back, a little more fun than I would say the average college football sports message board. Come to our Discord server. Um, it's a lot of fun. We hang out a lot on Saturdays, but th through the course of the week. And Kyle, through this entire Connor Stallions, Michigan sign stealing, I've, I've never had more fun in our Discord server. <laughs> I don't think it's ever been more fun than it's been uh, the past few weeks. So come hang out in the Discord server, discord.thesloopcast.com. Uh, we have a channel specifically dedicated to hating Michigan. We keep it tightly moderated, but not too tightly moderated. Um, so it's it's a place for Ohio State fans to come and be Ohio State fans. So uh, come to the Discord server. And by the way, we also have T-shirt stores. Tis the season, Kyle, uh, for buying your family some uh, Ohio-based merchandise. Uh, I'm actually wearing, uh, this is from our 7071 store. This is our Ohio beer only t-shirt. Kyle is wearing a uh, very uh, appropriate for the week t-shirt, the know your enemy t-shirt with a uh, no M in that sweatshirt, classic Buckeye Sloopcast wear. Um, Kyle's is from the uh, Sloopcast merch store, which is merch.thesloopcast.com. Mine's from the 7071 store, which is our like not merch merch store. It's just like, I like to call it yay Ohio gear. It's just like generally celebrating Ohio, but it doesn't look like podcast merch. So, because not everyone wants to wear, uh, never wants to wear podcast merch, right? But if you're just looking for some stuff that's just like, Ohio based apparel. Uh, you can check out the 7071 store. That's 7071 uh, numerically, 7071.thesloopcast.com. Um, dot and you can check out a bunch of cool designs we have over there. Um, one of our, some of our best selling stuff over there. Um, if you don't know, uh, the NFL was formed in Ohio, in Columbus, actually. The very first NFL headquarters was based in downtown Columbus. Uh, and as a result, a lot of the original NFL teams were based around the state of Ohio. Is 7071 hex code related? No, it's the interstates. It's it's Interstate 70, Interstate 71, which cross in Columbus. Um, the... Uh, so you know, a lot of the original NFL franchises were based in Ohio, and I have a bunch of um, both the original logos on T-shirts and also like reimagined versions of those logos also on T-shirts. Um, there's a bunch of stuff that's just like. Uh, I have what I call the comic book city collection in that there's a bunch of cities from Ohio in there, but I it, the art is done to make it look like a comic book city bunch of cool stuff like that so uh, all, all of it's designed by me uh you can find all that 7071.thesloopcast.com 7071 hex is close to our gray well technically uh the uh, color hex needs to have four digits so is that with the i'll, I'll look i'll look but uh no uh so oh it, it's it's in hex it would be C six C A C A, which is somewhat close to our gray. Our gray, by the way, is six 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 six. Don't worry, that's six sixes and not three, so we're good. Don't worry about that. Um, doesn't that make it worse? No, it's not. The the beast number is specifically three sixes. So six sixes is not three sixes. So we're good. Double. No, it's not double. It's a different number. It's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, we have fun. We have fun. Gang Gangland, uh, one of our staples uh, in the Discord server for sure. All right. Um, yeah, that's it. That's the end of the show. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's Corner? My oh. jersey is in the rafters here. <laughs> Give a shout out to my my alma mater high school, collecting the 
state semifinals that they oh, play yeah. in in Division Six football. Small ass, small ass school going at it here. <laughs> point, point to the bulldog, Kyle. Point to the bulldog. Oh yeah, there. Yeah, yeah no, you're doing right it right. There. You're doing it right. That one right there. <laughs> Y'all, if you've never tried to point at anything with a unmirrored camera, it ain't easy. Um, no. <laughs> all right, that's yeah, it. They, that's the end. Of, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. No, go right ahead. All right. That's it. That's the end of today's show. Tonight's ending music is by a Columbus based band called Playing to Vapors. They're one of my not just favorite bands in Columbus, not one of my favorite bands in Ohio, but just one of my favorite bands, period. Uh, once again, name of this band is Playing to Vapors. Name of this song is Ghost Hunter. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support local podcasters. Once again, this is Playing to Vapors. Thank you.